Hey, what's up guys? It's Critical here. I just found this game. It's called Resident Evil. That was terrible. That didn't even sound like him. Anyway, welcome back to Resident Evil. In this video, hopefully we are just going to plow through my least favorite part of this entire game. And as I've been saying for the past like three videos, we are just desperately trying to get the hell out of this mansion. And we are going to just keep trying to do that. So in the last video, what we did was we created a way to have that pool filled up with water and a way to cross the pool without actually having to do so in restoring power to the elevator. Because, as I said last time, Jill apparently was never given swimming lessons as a kid. Or as an adult. And I guess same thing goes for Chris. Chris makes sense because he's a big guy for you. So he'll probably just sink right to the bottom like a boulder. And then he'd try and punch himself. So anyway, this is what we do. This is our way to circumvent the pool. And filling the pool up deactivated a waterfall because this game's fucking dumb and the series is stupid when it comes to puzzles. So this is our new area. And this is my least favorite area of the entire game. Because it's boring to look at. These are just caves. They are beautifully rendered caves. But there are, you know, there's great lighting in here. The caves just look cool. But they're so boring. They're, no one likes brown and grays and stuff in, in games. So, it's just like... You spend maybe 20 minutes in this area if you know how to get through it. So, we're gonna just try and power through here because I hate this area. It's very confusing. I think that's the main reason I really hate this area. Because there's so many times that I get turned around because I don't know where I'm going because every single area looks the same. And you know, when they switch camera angles on you, you're like, wait, hold on, which way was I going? Like here, I didn't mean to go here. I meant to go straight, but I went that way because everything looks the same. Ugh. I love this game to death, but god, some parts just make me annoyed. Is that you, Jill? Is that voice Enrico's? Yeah. What horrible dialogue. Stop! Are you with anybody, Jill? No. But why? The stars are finished. Someone is a traitor. Umbrella set us up. Enrico! Traitor? Who? Rest in peace, Enrico Marini. You will be missed by almost no one. I do believe you see more of him in Resident Evil Zero, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, he's... He's just another one of those characters that just pops up to die. This hunter is the biggest non-issue. <laughs> He never hurts you. As long as you just keep running, he'll never attack you. Because he makes this one very grave mistake. Instead of jumping in, which can spook you, I suppose, and immediately attacking you, what he does instead is he jumps in and he screams at you, which isn't an attack. You can just run around him. He might get you on the rebound if you aren't fast enough getting around him. Like, he almost hit me there. But he is not a big deal. But you do have to watch out for other hunters. Like, that guy, he had the right idea. He just has terrible aim, apparently. So, in this area, I would, in fact, recommend keeping the shotgun out. And if you run out of bullets, I would say grab the grenade launcher. But you should be fine with a shotgun.
so what we need now is to put the assault shotgun away. We are going to grab the flame rounds and the uh, what you call it here, the grenade launcher. I brought a first aid spray with me because we're about to fight a boss battle. Actually, I'm not exactly certain if this is a boss battle, but it's an encounter that can go potentially wrong. So, um, yeah. This is another one of those, like, yawn, where I just kind of go full force in it and I don't worry about getting hit. I assume if you were doing some sort of no damage run, this could go bad, but I literally just sit there, let him attack me while I attack him, and I end up killing him before he kills me. This is just a dumb boss. And also, what we want to do here is go to this boulder, run away, and then that's it. Like, this is really dumb. I don't know what's propelling the boulders forward. Actually, no, of course I know why they're being propelled forward. We're not seeing it because it's off screen, but behind that boulder was Chris Redfield punching it. Duh. Uh, there are grenade shells over there by where the, the boulder came from. We are not going to grab them because we don't need them right now. I will grab them on my way back, though. So here we go. Here is a boss battle with a spider. I think this is called, like, the tiger thing. I don't know. It's like the tiger spider or some nonsense. Flame rounds, I think, kills them in about two hits. Uh, I've probably been poisoned, and I'm probably kind of dangerously close to dying. So he's dead. And what's going to happen is he's actually going to um, spawn all these little baby spiders. Just leave, They're, they will despawn. So that is how you deal with that spider. And that other spider that was on the ceiling will disappear completely. So kill him in about two shots with the, sh with the uh, acid, or with the flame round, sorry. And then leave the room and come back, and that is the best thing to do. You're probably like me, and you probably got poisoned. So go, you know, in that one door. There's another door in that room, and there will be a uh, anti-poison blue herb in there. This is the only Let's Play of this game on YouTube that the person that's playing it will actively tell you to get hurt. Now, I don't actually know, because this is a survival knife, I don't know if your normal knife will work here. I've never actually tried it, mostly because I, I get rid of the knife pretty quickly on in the game. And yeah, that's that. I don't know why that boss exists. It's kind of mostly a non-issue. And yeah, see right here, there's blue herbs. So you could just unpoison yourself, and you're good to go. I'm really glad that more games are coming out that don't have this kind of aesthetic to them, where they just look horribly boring and, like, gray and brown. Uh, before we do anything, we're gonna go pick up those shotgun shells that we missed from the boulder. The boulder! They are not here, I just got turned around because everything looks the same. So what I just did there was I backtracked a little bit and put the knife away, because guess what, just like the knife we start the game with, we don't need it. Knives are dumb and stupid and dumb and stupid. It's not until, I guess, 4, Resident Evil 4, that knives actually become useful. 
So this is a really difficult puzzle. What we have to do is use this crank. And then use the crank again. And then use the crank a third time. That is probably the most difficult puzzle in the game. Although, as you would expect, this one also just starts rolling towards you. What I like to do is just run forward and left, and it'll never hit you. And once again, this boulder has kind of, you know, opened up a little bit of a path for us by uh, moving. Well, I don't think this one gives us anything. Oh, it gives us a first aid box, which I don't think are very useful. They'll kind of, sometimes they'll they'll hide some spooky stuff in there, like there'll be a, an herb mixture in there. Sometimes, like, they'll give you a first aid spray. Sometimes there'll be a blue and green mix. Sometimes there'll be a red and green mix. Sometimes there's going to be a green and green mix. This is another dumb puzzle. And you know what? I should probably at this point just stop saying that because all the puzzles are dumb. There's not a single puzzle in any of these games that's like, oh, that makes sense. So first we want to push that statue in front of that area there. And then it pushed it out a little bit so that we can actually have more leeway with it. We're going to push it so it kind of aligns up with that circle thing in the middle. Which, by the way, if you step on it, you go for a little ride. Which is pretty funny. And it also displays something that is kind of bizarre. You'll notice, if you look at Jill, uh, you know, she, she displays a little, little jiggle. She's got some jiggle physics going on on her. Which I always thought was a very bizarre thing to add to a game. Especially one like this where she's dressed pretty modestly. Um, so what we're going to want to do is push this guy off of this circle again. And hopefully we don't get turned around. And push it back on again. So we flip it another time. This is just, it's such an unnecessary puzzle. Did we need all these steps? Couldn't we just push this into the wall in the first place? Did we really need to flip this on this weird spinner thing in the middle of the room? And why isn't Jill getting, like, pushed around when she was on it just then? This game a dumb. The game's logic is dumb. When you really think about it from the perspective of... Put yourself in this world. How do people function in the world of Resident Evil, when there's these kinds of dumb puzzles laying around Raccoon City as well. I legitimately forgot that was there there, so I just took Jill for a little ride. I think another reason that I just straight up don't like this area is because there's there's really no music going on here. There's very minimal music, and if there is music, it's just kind of like... There's background noise, which is kind of annoying. It sounds like machinery going off. And see, I just got turned around again! And there's very minimal music, so there's nothing interesting going on here. You maybe do interesting... There's one interesting thing you do in this part, but the things going on visually is so completely uninteresting. And like I said, this is a trope that I'm glad is dying out, if not, you know, being just completely dead. Because I think enough people were starting to complain about every single game looks the same, everything's grim dark and, you know, brown and gray. I'm sure for the time when this came out in 2002? 2001, 2002? I'm sure it wasn't such a big deal, because that wasn't really a trope yet at that time. But still, playing this game in 2016, you know, it just, it, this area looks boring. This part's cool, however. This part that we're about to get into is a part that I actually enjoy about this, because it, it involves something in this game that I enjoy. So, before we picked up the plug, there's another part of this little thing over here. 
the shaft. We're gonna plug our plug into the shaft. And then just straight up plug this into there. You could have picked this up at any time, but then you're just, you know, making extra steps for yourself. So the solution to this is 4, 2, 3, 1. It's just another one of those things where I'm not exactly sure why that's the solution, but I just input that every time. So it's just muscle memory at this point. Like, I know it's 4, uh, 4, 2, 3, 1. Don't forget this magazine clip, you know, giving us 117 bullets. We definitely need every single one of those. Even though we haven't fired our gun once. Jill! Barry? Thank God you're safe. You too, Jill. A noise I heard brought me down here, but I didn't expect to find a place like this. Have any idea as to what might be at the bottom? There's only one way to find out. I hate when things just happen in this game. Like, Barry says he heard a noise that brought him down here. What I assume he heard is impossible for him to have heard. What the hell is that sound? It could be a person. Jill. Go check it out. We had enough surprises for one day. I'll stay here and secure our escape route in case something happens. Okay. What an asshole. Barry is not very likable in this game. But yeah, I'm assuming that moaning is what he heard. There's no way he could have heard that. Because we're like three layers deep into this area right now. And he had to wander into this area behind a waterfall somehow. I'll stay and secure our escape route. Even when you find some stuff out later, you know, it still just doesn't make any sense. Thankfully, they give you an item box here, which you can just kind of put this crank away because we don't need it. And we're going to want to take with us this metal object because even though we won't need it immediately, we will still need it at some point soon. So through here is the only redeeming part of this entire underground section. There's a cool tip in this area that, that I learned not too long ago. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. So go left over here, and there's Lisa Trevor. Lisa Trevor will spawn in whichever way you start going. So if you start going left, she will appear on the, right, uh, on the left route. If you go right, she'll appear right. So, we have to go right in this area in order to avoid Lisa Trevor best. Start off by going left and then immediately go right. So, that's a pretty cool trick that I learned in, in order to kind of exploit Ms. Trevor there. And yeah, this part's kind of cool just because, you know, Lisa at this point is kind of unkillable. There's no real point in trying to attack her, so... You're just kind of, you know, running away from her, and I always like being chased by unkillable enemies in video games. That's one of the few things that can elicit fear in me. Uh, speaking of things that elicit fear in me, box pushing is pretty dreadful because it takes way too long. This is also one of the most picky boxes I've ever seen. Because as you can see here, I'm pushing it onto here. 99% of the time that I do this, I push it on here and it's like, Oh, this it's not aligned properly. Let's see. Fuck you, box. What, do I have to push you over a centimeter more? It won't even move. It's aligned perfectly. Jill's head just went through the box. Maybe that's what I needed to do. Are you fine now? What was different? What was different about that? I moved it to the left a little bit more? That's dumb. And I hate that you can't leave here until this little cutscene's done. There is nothing about this part of the game that I like, other than Lisa Trevor. Because at least Lisa Trevor's spooky and interesting 
and not boring, unlike this part of the game. So yeah, keep my tip in mind if you really want to avoid Lisa Trevor. Whichever way you go is where she will spawn. And there is no outlet there, which I thought, because this level design is bland. This is also a very easy area for me to get turned around in as I'm demonstrating currently, because everything looks the same. I will be very glad to get out of here, because... From here on out, it's pretty smooth sailing. Barry! You piece of shit, Barry. Why would he do that? So, what we need to do now is just another in a long line of dumb puzzles in this series. Um, let's combine those magnum bullets and get out of here. That box that we pushed on that... That ferry, that's just what I'm going to call it, actually does serve a purpose. We didn't just do that for no reason. Let us continue to push this box, because that is something that everyone loves in pretty much every single video game. We are pushing this where it belongs, in the garbage compactor because for whatever reason I guess Jill couldn't shoot through this or stab through it with a knife maybe she has two of them after all we just have to crush it and inside of course miraculously undamaged by the garbage compressor is a flamethrower it is however a flamethrower that does not work so it's not like we're using this as a weapon. Now, I understand that I think what's being implied here is that the garbage compressor did, in fact, um, break the flamethrower, but it didn't, like, flatten it, which you would assume. It's thankfully undamaged enough to the point where we can still use it for what we need, and what we need it for is dumb. Because again, you gotta think about it. Why does this area exist in the in the like the world of Resident Evil? Does Umbrella use this? Do people from Umbrella go through this area every day on their way into work? Do they have to do the same stuff that we're doing? Because what we have to do with this is first off, there's a lever here that we have to push or pull. This will start a timer over here that will extend those. That is where we want to place this flamethrower because that unlocks this door that is next to us I don't know why things are the way they are in this series as I've said it must be extremely fucked up to live in the world of Resident Evil because not only do you got monsters everywhere but on your way into work you gotta go through puzzles after, after puzzles that don't make a whole lot of sense. Also, you'd think you'd, we'd be coming here a lot, because this area is pretty detailed and it looks cool, but you really don't ever need to do anything in this area. I would recommend, like, once Lisa Trevor gets introduced in this section, unequip your gun, you don't need it, you don't need to shoot anything, and you run faster. So just straight up, just don't bring your gun out. Over here is a box that we can combine the metal seal with. And thankfully this time, we don't have to do a stupid sliding block puzzle like we did last time. So this is more information about the Trevor family. This is what I was talking about before, how they were experimented on, and how Lisa was kind of responsible for discovering the G-Virus in some respects. Whoops, don't know why I skipped that. Now, that said, like, they, they brought my mom to me. It was the same face, but different inside. I thought that meant, like, oh yeah, her mom was a zombie. Like, it was clearly her face, but she wasn't the same. 
apparently, like, because I read it up on it on, like, the Resident Evil wiki, apparently they just were, like, imposter parents. So I don't know why that detail's in there. It would have made more sense for it to be like, oh, my mom's a zombie now. We will come to find out that Lisa Trevor has quite a bit of mommy issues. And possibly we will be able to exploit that for our own needs. But we are actually now in the shack where we first met Lisa Trevor. And we're going to go ahead and call it a video here. So hopefully you enjoyed yourself in this video. I know I didn't. And I will see you in the next one.